daughter's mother. Hope this finds you in good health. I know you despise me. I still don't understand why. Is it because I refused to fight you on the regular? Is it because I respected you? Is it because I promised to be there and now I'm not? You do realize the last one was not my fault. But I do know a man who would stay in a relationship where fighting was going on. That's a problem. I can't express how much I hated that. It seems to be your sex trade. But enough about that. I am writing to ask you why you would draw a line between me and my daughter. I never did anything to harm you, nor to hurt anyone else. But there is a lot said about me that was untrue. Crazy that the get back is like that. You promised never to cause issues between me and her. But like a drop of a dime, you have. She doesn't even want to talk to me. And when I came to see her during her sister's graduation, you let me know how mad she was at me. All because I refused to do certain things for you. It's funny. Every time you needed to talk to me, it had nothing to do with her. But what you wanted like a new truck or a new house. So because I'm unwilling to help, you cut me off. Me and my daughter's communication, you cut. I try and I try to be the good guy, but it's getting old. Not hearing from her, even on holidays, my birthday, her birthday, not even Father's Day. I understand you hate me. But do you hate her as well? You know, when she finds out our separation was because of you, there will be hell to pay. She hates me now, but soon the hate will shift. Took care of five kids that weren't even mine, but I can't even communicate with my own flesh and blood. I think this is very selfish, and your hate will be your own issue. God bless you. Jacob. Don't break down yet, it's over. over. Oh, wrong show. people what's going on people this is i mr tone deaf and what you just heard there was a heartfelt letter written by a father who only wants to see his daughter this day and age we live in a world where communication is so important to the point that there's no excuse why communication cannot happen but unfortunately it does happen in rare occasions sometimes those occasions is when a parental decides to not let the other parent have the capabilities of speaking to their kids for whatever reason it may be. I understand sometimes women that you keep the father away from the child because the father is poisonous in so many words. They can be abusive, they can be overly aggressive, or in some particular cases the father just was not ready to be a dad and it's too late in your mind for that man to be able to come back into that child's life. But what we're going to do today, people, is we're going to actually look at this from both sides of the coin. But not from the woman's perspective, because let's be honest, people, we are in the man cave. We hear the woman's side of the perspective every single day. It's to the point that the judicial system for a very, very, very long time said that no matter what the situation was, unless the mother was openly abusive to the kid, by default, the mom got the kid. But guess what, people? That's not the case anymore. We live in a world where both parents do have stability and both parents do have the capability of being able to provide for their kids equally. That even in court cases, 
okay? Court cases this day and age are actually giving not only partial, but full parental rights to fathers for their children. In 2019, there was a specific case where a mother had all three of her kids at the time ranging from the age of 9 to 14 removed from her and given to the father with 100% full custody due to the fact that she did parental alienation syndrome. Now you might ask yourself, what in the hell is that? Okay, PAS is when one parent forcefully, aggressively, and maliciously keeps the other parent away from the child. Thus causing the child to have a disdain hate for their other parent. The sad part is, people, this happens a lot to men. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually dive in deep today and actually try to decipher from a male's point of view why this actually occurs. Now, not only to sit here and defend men, because we understand there are some dead <coughs> men out there. There are some men that walked away from the responsibility because they just was too immature at the time. But we're going to also talk about the times when they want to come back and try to make things right. And just like everything else in the world, there is a way for us to go ahead and do that. And like always, I'm joined here with my brethren here in the cave. As you heard earlier, we already got Gator in the building holding it down. But I can't do the man cave without my right hand man. Mr. Kyle Williams is in the building as well today. So what's going on, guys? Uh, what's, what's good? Up? What's good? We in the cave, man. This is definitely this is definitely a, a very, you know, um, personal topic and a very serious topic that's going on nowadays in this world because if not the world the world is not what it was 15 20 years ago i mean shit, the world is not what it was 10 years ago and you know now you have you have a lot of fathers now stepping up and taking taking custody not just walking away from the household and leaving the children with the mother and they go about do what they do and start a new family or take care of someone else's kids or you know what i'm saying just just live their best life like the world has definitely changed and i mean you have you have a lot of mothers nowadays that are intervening and stopping that father from trying to be that that good father that he is, whether it's for personal reasons, whether it's for financial reasons, or whether it's just because they just want to be a motherfucking asshole. No you doubt. know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to be with them no more. No doubt. You know, now, so I'm, I'm it's glad definitely. You it up. I'm glad you brought that up. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to kick tonight's shows off. Like I said, here at Tone Deaf Radio, we mm -hmm. get letters all the time. I actually received this letter a while back, but I didn't want to bring mm -hmm. it up because I knew with Father's Day coming up, I want to go ahead and, and kind of combine it with tonight's topic. Um, so it was perfect. Right. Young lady sent in a letter. Okay. She mm -hmm. actually sent it to the ladies of Tone Deaf Radio during a time when TDR dressed TD. TDR undress was actually running before they took their small hiatus. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and let's ask the men. Okay. She went on and said in the later, I really don't want the father of my daughter's life at all. Okay. Let me rephrase that. I really don't want the father of my child in my daughter's at life at all. All because he is unfit, unfit, and not going to help me support this baby. And all we do is fight. I don't want my kid around all that. The last time I talked to him was to tell him the baby is not his. So he would stop harassing me and texting me. Not leaving me alone. Asking Whoa. questions I didn't know. Or had to answer to. His anger problems, he finally left me alone after saying that. But I felt as soon, but I felt as a soon-to-be mother, that is just the best not letting him know or be around her is anyone in the same kind of boat that I am. Now, the reason why she specifically wanted to ask the ladies of TDR this question, because I think almost everybody on the staff but one person is a parent. But after reading the question and actually putting it out there on Tone Deaf Radio's um, page at one point in time i got a lot of different responses in regards to this that kind of threw me off 
but kind of opened up probably mm-hmm. one of the first questions or the first answers that I came to a conclusion of why women keep their kids away from the father. Now, the first person responded mm-hmm. now all these are un all of these are uh, anonymous answers, people. So I actually took the post down after a week of it being up. So you won't see it. You don't know who it came from just to protect the people uh, who posted this because I don't want backlash coming back to them for trying to help this young lady out. The first answer that I got was do what you feel best. Pregnancy is tough and the guy should stay around for moral and emotional support. If not, don't show up for the birth. They want the title, but they don't want the job. Okay, so some of the reasons that the young lady is stating is because they don't want the stress of dealing with the man. Okay, Mm, now a young lady followed up by asking them, is there a reason you don't want him in your child's life? You may have resentment towards him. That doesn't mean he shouldn't be around his child. What makes him unfit? Okay, which is a great question. Mm. Okay. The next one came is, Mm -hmm. I was wondering the same thing. Just because you don't like him doesn't mean your child shouldn't have her dad in her life. Now, if he was abusive, addicted to drugs, an alcoholic, different story. If he's one of those, he should maybe, and I stress the maybe, be given a chance for supervised visitation. If that's not good enough, then he shouldn't be around at all. But if you're just upset with him over something... Think of how your daughter would feel when she gets older and start asking questions or somehow meet him. Okay? Exactly. Follow up. Young lady actually said, sounds like the story of my life. It's crazy. So far, I have decided not to allow him in my life since he is so negative. I don't want him on my baby certificate either, so he has no rights over him. He emailed and apologized, but I still feel he's not ready. And to be honest, I'm not either. So only time will tell. I will take it a day at a time. Now, I don't want to go any further in regards to this one because I want to dive into a couple of things that we came across. Now, as men, Mm -hmm. we all have kids here. Um, We're all in different scenarios in regards to it. When you first found out that you had a child on the way, how did you feel when that experience was coming up? <clears throat> Let's start with you, Cal. Oh, um, I was nervous. I was, I was excited. I wasn't actually, I wasn't, I know some people say they've been scared. I wasn't actually scared. I, I really wasn't. I, I was nervous, you know, because I wanted to be that best father that I knew I could be and I knew I would be, but it's, it was just my nerves. It, it was racking. It was like, wow, about to be a new dad, you know, this and that. It, it was very nervous for me, but I was excited. Like I couldn't wait because I knew the type of father that I wanted to be and I knew the type of father that I was going to be. So I was just like ready. I was ready. Like, okay, come on. I know what I got to do. Um, I was the type of young man that grew up fast. Like I had a childhood. I'm not going to say I didn't have a childhood because I had a childhood, had a real good childhood. But at the same time, mentally, I had to grow up quick because I was, my mom was so sick. You know, all, all, I've always known her to be sick, so I had to be the man of that house. So with coming into being a father, I was ready. Like I was ready to give that same love, that same responsibility, that same dedication to that child that was coming into the world that was mine. You know, so it was, it was... I w- it was it was mixed between exciting and, and nervous, and I, I I was ready for it, and and I knew before the before before my child entered this earth, before my child entered the earth, I knew that I wasn't gonna let nothing or nobody stop me from being that father, you know, like it, it that was like embedded in my mind, like <laughs> you know, right. so that that's that's how I felt. All right, now let's swing over to you, um, Jacob. Now. Going based off the the letter that you opened the show with, and also previous episodes of both the breakdown and the man cave, you have stated that not only do you have a child with this young lady, you've also taken the responsibilities mm-hmm. of her kids. That mm-hmm. kind of you rely to in regards to some situation. For you people who want to know about those particular stories, definitely make sure you check out some of the past episodes of The Breakdown. Um, There's one particular episode where Jacob went in-depth in regards to his previous marriage if you want to be caught up to speed. 
How did you feel when you found out that she was pregnant with your child? Uh, pretty much the same thing Cal went through. Excitement, nervousness, of course, because it's my first child, my only child. Um, hoping that I was ready to be the father that she needed me to be um, and do the things that I needed to do. At the same time, the excitement was so so great because of all of my siblings. I was the first to have a child. Okay. And so it was like, oh, man, this this is awesome. I can't believe this. You know, I've, I've waited until I got married to actually have a child. And that was my whole that was a big thing for me. Like, I didn't want to have any children out of wedlock, not knocking anybody that do or did, but that was my own personal thing. Being raised in the church was a okay. big thing for me. So when it actually happened, yeah, it was it was excitement for me. Okay. Now, let me stick with you for a while because the first half of the show is actually a more of a relatable situation for you than me and Cal. How was her reaction when she found out she was pregnant? Because this definitely was not her first child. Mm -hmm. How did she react um, when she found out she was pregnant? When she found out, I actually wasn't there. So to say I really know what happened when she first found out, I didn't know I was at work. Okay. Um, How did she tell you? She had, she had the symptoms. She had the symptoms, but we didn't know for sure. She told me um, by actually leaving the pregnancy test in the restroom, in the bathroom. So did and she, she do kept it on purpose? Me. Yeah, she did it on purpose. Okay. Because she knew, she knew I wanted a child. We had talked about this. At the same time, it was a already made family bringing another child into the situation. I was kind of iffy about it, but at the same time, I, I did want an offspring, and I figured we're married. In my mind, this is the last person I'm going to be with the rest of my life. I want a child. <laughs> okay. And that's, that's and natural. And so we talked about it, and yeah, and I... I she kept pressuring me to go to the bathroom, and I didn't. I couldn't. It didn't click. I didn't understand why. Are you sure you don't need to use the restroom? Are you sure you don't want to wash up? Finally, she just got frustrated, and she pushed me in the bathroom. And I went in the bathroom, and I saw it was like, <laughs> for me, I didn't have. I, I couldn't say anything. I was so gone, like at the moment. Um. She was happy because she was smiling the whole time. So I took it as she was excited and she was happy about it. Okay. But, now, you know, yeah. Now, and I know this is a very happy occasion for all of y'all. Um, mm -hmm. My question, when did things start going wrong with you and her? Because let's, I want to dive into the root of the problem here. So when did you two started getting to the point that you couldn't you couldn't work through the issues that occurred like when when did you say enough was enough well as i mentioned in the letter my baby's mom um a big thing with her was fighting i have a problem with that i'm not into that that was not a thing that I like to do, putting my hands on women. She would start arguments. She would start all kind of fights and stuff like that. I always would leave the situation, meaning if we were in the house or whatever the case would be, I would leave. I would either take a drive. I would take a walk. I would go to her cousins because they lived in the same complex as we lived in, um, have a conversation, do whatever I need to do to calm myself down and come back to the situation. Because I felt like with two people upset, arguing, frustrated, 
there would be no clarity going on if we just screaming at each other. So one That's of us had to have, you know, one of us had to have the lighter head. Well, this time in particular, we were in Alabama, and I left. And when I left, I was so, like, I had never gotten that mad in my life. And to this, to this day, I can't remember right now what the argument was about, but something happened that had me so upset that I went to my parents, who are pastors, they're pastors now. Back then, my dad was just a pastor, but I went to my father and I asked my father, Dad, is it okay for me to stay at the church? For a couple of nights. That's how bad it was. He said yes. One thing turned into another. I can't. I went from, you know, I was still going back to the house, making sure there was food in the crib, paying the rent, going to work, making sure the kids got to school, got back home. Anything they needed, I was doing. I just wasn't physically there in the house. Well, okay. this turned into think about three months and I looked up and it was like, Whoa, okay. I got a phone call from my parents when I was asleep. I had got off work. I worked third shift that night and I got a call saying I needed to go to the house, pick them up and take them to the bus station. At that time I didn't know what was going on or why. Come to find out they were leaving. They were going back to where they came from. And I won't say where it is, but... All right. So yeah. I have a question. Now, this is not me trying to dissect mm -hmm. your relationship, but this is just me leading to mm -hmm. a point. All the times that you uh -huh. guys fought, all the times you guys had disagreements, all the times you guys argued, did you ever come to a resolution about anything you guys got into an argument about? Hmm. <sighs> We did five. a couple of times. We did a couple of times. Now, mm -hmm. but before, my, before, my before you tell is, it, before you tell it, when you came okay. to your resolution, mm -hmm. was it a quick band aid fix or was the problem actually solved? <clears throat> and to add on it to that, it? to add on to that, was it a resolution in the sense of you be you you being the one that had to just take it on the chin and compromise or was it a resolution to where y'all both was able to come to a resolution, resolution together? The, I know one time in particular it was both of us coming to a resolution. Mm -hmm. okay. But usually, if you think about it, we always take it on the chin. <laughs> Not really. You get a lot of times we do. do a lot, that lot of time times in particular. We do, it, we do it for our sanity. Uh -huh. But at the end of the day, there are yeah. some moments where we put our right. foot down because we have to put our foot down. And I get that. Okay. Right. And this was and this was one of those times. Like when I left, like I had never left the house. Never. May I ask I would leave and I would come back. May I ask what what was the situation? Or, or if you don't want to share it, you don't have to. I but can't what, I'm gonna be honest with you right now. It, it won't even come to my mind. It, you know what? I take that back. It had to do with my daughter. Okay. It had to do with my daughter. And mm -hmm. she pretty much threw in my face something about me not doing what I was supposed to be doing. At the, mind you, I'm working third shift. I'm coming to the house. I'm mm -hmm. taking care of business. I'm doing what I need to do. And then mm -hmm. I get thrown in my face how I ain't doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. Before my daughter was there, and you brought up, I was taking care of five kids before my daughter came. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Read but I, but we, go ahead. Go ahead. I get no credit for that. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. go ahead. Go ahead. Right. What you was going to say? The reason why I bring up this question is this is going to lead to the second reason why women keep their kids away from their men. Control. Mm -hmm. See what happens is is when an ain't shit woman, because I have to say an ain't shit woman, because a real woman is not going to do this. A real woman is not going right. to want to struggle because of her feelings. Okay, 
Mm -hmm. Ain't shit woman is the kind of woman that would do this. Some women will use their kid as leverage. Some women will use their kids as a method of trying to manipulate the situation to get things back in their favor. I'm going to be blunt mm -hmm. and honest mm -hmm. with you, Jacob, because I'm talking to you as a brother. You are probably one of the nicest mm -hmm. guys that I've ever met when it comes to the way you view women, no matter what race, creed, or color they are. But the problem is right. you are also a pushover. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I have to say that is, is because your religious beliefs create, created a mentality where certain things you felt was supposed to be the way things are done. And because of that, mm -hmm. you, you stick to those as your, your deciding factor. Like, you didn't like to argue, you didn't want to be all aggressive, you didn't want to go the way things were going with her, so you would walk away from the situation because you've been taught to de-escalate yourself. Because of that, mm -hmm. because you always de-escalated the situation to stop what you might do, made her look at you as a saw. Because you would always do the right thing. These kids didn't ask to be here. The one she had before the marriage or mm -hmm. even the one that you helped create, they didn't ask to be here. These are results mm -hmm. of two people engaging in something God mm -hmm. created and they came here. She seen mm -hmm. that these kids are a tool of control. Unlike the other men right. who yeah. she probably tried to do yeah. the same thing with, they left because they were sick of her shit. She seen that, okay, these two, these these kids over here, you're going to do whatever you can to take care of these kids because they need a male role model in their life. But when you guys had one, one sure fire away that this kid is going to be taken care of by you, no matter what happens in life, she had a method of control. She had a way of controlling you mm -hmm. now. Something else that I don't think you've ever allowed crossed your mind because of how everything went down. Mm -hmm. Do you think she's still in love with you? She said she was. Okay. The reason why I'm asking this question is, this is, this is what, no, no, let me, the reason why uh -huh. I'm asking the question before you dive into it is because a woman does not play games with a man's child unless she wants that man back. Okay? In some form. In some form. Whether she wants you back physically, whether she wants you back financially, whether she wants you back emotionally, she still wants you back. Mm -hmm. Okay? That woman has a demon in her. And I don't, I don't normally use this. Okay? Because I'm not not that kind of person who could tell you what a demon look like, so I don't normally do this. But that woman has a demon in her. And the reason why I say she has a demon because she tends to make decisions with the flesh, not with the heart. Mm-hmm. Okay? Not with the heart, exactly. Not with the heart. And when you make decisions with the flesh, you usually tend to use the flesh to make controls of trying to get what you want. This is why you got so many women out here right. who have no problem selling their pussy to get cash because mm -hmm. they always chase an right. almighty dollar. But what they don't realize is no matter mm -hmm. what you do in this world, you'll never have enough money. Mm -hmm. You can have $10 billion. Right. You still will never have enough money. Okay. That's right. And that was her mentality. You're such mm -hmm. a great guy that you're going to make right. sure not only are the kids who didn't ask to be here are going to be taken care of, but the woman he said, I do to, <clears throat> You're going to take care of her. And she used the mm -hmm. flesh to mm -hmm. seal the deal. She knew, right. she knew you are a man who wants a wholesome woman. You are a man that wants mm -hmm. a family. Okay? Right. If you get a woman that's going to pay mm -hmm. attention to you, that's going to cook for you, that's going to give you roof over your head, and that's going to knock your socks off, you were going to do whatever you can to keep that woman because you want to know why? That's what all men want. Regardless of how we look at our all life, men want. at the end of the day, the basic right. platform is what I just named. A roof over their head, right. a woman to love them, and, a, and a, a place where you can piss with a door closed. 
You give us those three things, we right. perfectly fine. Okay? She played we off good. that. She played off of that. Because there's a demon in her that she can't get rid of. And I'm not preaching out there, people who are listening, like mm. this is church, because mm -hmm. I haven't stepped foot in a church since 2015. <laughs> but I still pay attention to how the world runs. Okay? That's right. Mm -hmm. She clings to you. Because out of all the fathers out there, you didn't judge her demon. Mm -hmm. You accepted mm. all flaws she had. When that demon exactly. would come out and show you what she looks like, you walked away from it. You probably prayed on her and you went back to that demon. Those other men tried to get that demon out of her. They just probably didn't use the right methods. Some of them may have gotten physical. Right. Some of them may have gotten a little aggressive. Some of them may have cut them mm -hmm. off. Okay? At the end mm -hmm. of the day, they tried to get that demon out of her. And mm -hmm. after they realized they ain't got the proper tools, they walked away. Unfortunately, they left a kid behind. Now, mm -hmm. some of the men were still handling their business because, like you said on previous episode of The Breakdown, you have conversations with them. The problem is, is yeah. that demon runs that woman now. Okay? And the reason why I know that is because if the flesh wasn't in control, your daughter would probably be sitting right next to you right now. Instead of you on a manhunt. Because I could probably find her for you, to be honest with you. But I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to do that on air. Mm-hmm. That's between me and you at a later date. I know where she is. And I know you know where she is. And I do. And I do. I know where she is. But, it's just, uh... but what you have to do is never give up. Okay? This is to any of you guys out there who mm -hmm. are going through this. Okay? You don't have to give up. The judicial system is changing in favor of us now. Okay? They are. Yeah, it is. Moms yeah. are not always the best option. The court system always felt that we should give the kids to the mother, especially because they gave birth to them. As the previous story that we started with earlier of the young lady who felt that because they were always fighting and arguing and he was getting aggressive at times that she didn't want him to be a father or be a part of his kid's mm. life has done one thing that we as real fathers fight hard is you are damaging that kid. It is a known fact that mm -hmm. you can raise a kid with just one parent, but you can only raise leaders with both. Women, this one's for you. It's very important that you allow your child to have both parents in their lives. And the reason why you need to have both parents in their lives is because there are perspectives and things in life that you can only get from a male perspective. Okay? Yeah. Involved dads equal success for children. Plain and simple. It's actually a study proving it. There's a study that was actually done by the U.S. Department of Education that proves that 43% of kids who have an active father, not a male role model, people, but an active father, okay, are more successful. You want to know why? Because a couple of things. One, there's a minimization of behavior problems in school, okay? That kid is not wondering why daddy doesn't love me anymore. Okay, because the kid knows mm -hmm. dad is telling him dad is showing him dad is making that possible. Even if dad happens to live across town, dad is still communicating. Okay, and sometimes that's all that a kid needs, both son and daughter. Okay, number two, you don't have depression. Okay. Hmm. Most importantly, the mother doesn't have depression. Because a mother is not out here trying to do everything on her own because even though she's not with the father, the father is helping. 
So women, mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. actually hurting yourself just as much as you're helping the kid because you feel like he's this way. There are women out there who before they ever get pregnant say they will never have kids because they're going to be a terrible mom. Nine months later, they will not let their kid out their sight and they dedicate everything about them to that kid. Why do you feel like a father can't have that opportunity to change his ways as well, women? Okay? Because we do. We might not do it as fast as y'all do because we don't actually have the child growing inside of us. We don't have the stress. We don't have the pain. And more importantly, we didn't physically go through the pregnancy. But we still go through the growth, the realization, the understanding. Because a lot of a lot of guys are having kids at a very young age. They're not growing up to be a man yet before they're becoming fathers. So sometimes that time frame takes a while and you have to forgive these guys and give them an opportunity. Supervised visitations, mandatory responsibilities, you know what I'm saying? Do things to not allow that man to walk away from his responsibilities because that's what a lot of you women allow. You get into one fight, you get into one argument, emotions, hormones, all these things are going crazy during the pregnancy and we allow one moment to change three people's lives. And that's exactly, that's a good point right there. A lot of times you allow emotion to get involved of what, uh, of reality, you know what I'm saying? And like you said, that you take that one moment and you make a, you make a emotional decision at that time, which changes everyone's life because we already know nine, nine times out of 10, when you make an emotional decision, nine times out of 10, that's the wrong decision because you're not thinking rational. You're not thinking what should be. You're not thinking what's the correct approach. You're thinking emotionally. And when you emotional, you know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of times when you emotional, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're, it's pretty much could be classified as unstable or temporarily unstable at that time because you're not talking with a sound mind. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So if you're not, if you're not even talking with a sound mind at that time, what makes you think you can make a, deci- a, a rational decision at that time and be right? You can't. But then you got people that make emotional decisions and then they, and even when they know they wrong, they try to stand wrong and strong. And, and, and it'll be like two, three years. You know your ass is wrong for what you did or what you said. But if you ain't grown enough to own up to your wrong and fix it, then you wind up living a, 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 a life that you really don't even want to live because you're too damn stubborn and emotional to make it right. And now you're passing that on to your child. So what you're doing is you're continuing the cycle the wrong way. Fact. <laughs> so... And I've had those conversations. I've had those conversations with, yeah, I was wrong. But you was wrong, too. See, that's growth right there. You know what? That right there, that right there, when someone says that, that right there just tells you, you don't fully understand you're wrong. Because... All right, and and you could be right saying you your your statement could be right saying that oh I was wrong but you was wrong that could be a right statement but for you to lead with that comment and, and try yeah. to build your case off of you was right but I mean you was wrong I was wrong but you was wrong that right there tells 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 the person the other party that you yourself don't even fully understand your wrong and you're not even owning up. You're not even owning up to your wrong. So how can we even make the situation fully correct and not a temporary correct if you can't even own up to your wrong in the situation completely without bringing up that I was wrong too? What happens is, is communication needs to be improved. Once we find out that pregnancy has occurred, meaning education is necessary, communication is necessary, and just sheer expressing how you feel. See, I'm going to have to put a little blame on men here. Men, we don't have to be tough all the time. It's okay sometimes 
to be soft. It's okay sometimes to be a little sensitive. It's okay to have sadness and confusion. And the reason why it's okay to do that, because you're letting, know, you're letting that woman know that the way she's feeling is okay. Because you're feeling Matters. the same way too. That's right. Okay? Plus, that mm -hmm. allows you two to bond right. even better. Another thing that a lot of women do, and it's not their fault. It's not their fault. It's passed down. Fear of parental absence. What I mean by that is we live in a day and mm -hmm. age where a lot of single parents exist. Sadly, a lot of single mothers exist. So a lot of women will go the route of being independent before even giving that man the opportunity. Okay? Right. This is not something that they're being vindictive, they're being evil. They just know how to handle things by themselves. This is one of those moments where an right. independent woman is being too independent. Now, she'll give you, oh, yeah, right. you can get visitations here and there, but I don't need you for anything. Okay? Oh, I won't put you on child support. I got everything covered. Don't worry about it. You, you know, if you want her or you want him, you can easily come get him, but you're not obligated. Don't do that, ladies. Mm -hmm. I get it. You guys did something. You made a baby. Okay? But make that man be accountable. Don't give him a free pass to get out of responsibilities. Because I can guarantee you he's been getting that all his life. One of the biggest issues that I've always had with um, men who grow up in a single parent household is due to the fact of that father or that male role model being missing, specifically that father, because an uncle, an older cousin, a grandfather, they can be a positive male role model, but your dad, the one who you came from, has just a little bit more authority of the situation over a stepfather, a grandfather, a uncle, only because he brung you into this world. Okay? Regardless if he got mm -hmm. his shit together, he still brung you into this world. So there's a level of understanding mm -hmm. you need from him. Whether it's the physical makeup of your body. Why do you have certain things? Why are certain genetic defects or anomalies exist. He can tell you that. Only he can tell you that. Okay? Even though the brother, the uncle might be his brother, he's not he doesn't have the same defects that you have. So he can't explain it the same way you mm -hmm. or if something happens and you're like, why do I do this? Your dad can explain where it came from. Okay? Women don't push that man away because you don't want disappointment because you've had it once before disappointment failure is the best lesson in life because if you don't fail at something you're not forced to look at something from a different perspective the way your mom raised yeah, you might you'll never not know be how you'll option. never know how it's still to win right your mom raising you her way of raising may not be the best my mom came from a beat first ask questions later generation Okay, that mm -hmm. might not be the best way to raise two girls. My dad was a let's pay for everything. Let's put a bandaid over the situation and we'll come back to a letter. That's not always the best way. Okay. But allowing that other parent to have input in the raising of this child will probably not only open up your eyes of looking at things from a different perspective, but giving your kid opportunities that they never knew. If you push true. the father out the picture, but you completely forgot that the father is half German, there's a whole slew of stuff that as, let's just say, an African-American woman in this situation doesn't know about. There may be traditions that this kid growing up in life might want to learn about. There may be certain diseases that only affected the Germans or whatnot. Or maybe you he wasn't German. Maybe you come to find out he was Polish, but you never knew because you kept that separate. Mm. Don't do that, women. 
don't forcefully push that man out that child's life in the beginning because you don't want to suffer from parental absentees. Okay. Now, we've already talked about the women who keep the kids out the father's lives. And this is a good transition over to the second topic for tonight. The men who opted to stay out the kid's life. Now, Jacob, I'm going to start with you. What do you have to say to these men who freely said, fucking them out? I don't understand it. It's it's mind-boggling to me. Because there's so many, like, I'm not the only one. I've I know there's more guys that feel the way that I do because like even on social media, I'm a part of groups of men who want to be in their kids' life. Oh, yeah. For one reason or another, they're not allowed to. It's crazy to me that guys will opt out and say, yo, I don't want to be in their life. I don't want to have nothing to do with them because, and majority of the time, it's because of that woman that they made them with. It ain't my fault you picked her. <laughs> Granted, yeah, situations happen and things go awry. But at the same time, like you said earlier, these kids ain't asked to be here. And my whole problem with it is my daughter growing up without me being there or even talking to her or having communications and her resenting men as a whole because of how she feels about me right now. Like, and I don't get it. I'm, I'm, anybody knows me knows I'm cool. I'm, I'm cool. I'm laid back. I ain't the type to do no craziness. I prom. there was a promise made to me that this would not happen. This wasn't going to go on, even because we talked about it beforehand. If we had separated and gone our separate ways, I would always have my daughter in my life. I would always be there. That changed. And I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why women feel that way, the need to, okay, well, we're going to just push him out of that life, just like that letter you was reading Later on, when they find out, it what goes hand in hand with mm-hmm. it goes hand in hand with what we just said about emotion. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But at the at the end game, the person that's gonna be hurt behind it is her. It's child. the kids. That's right. The child's gonna hurt. So instead of you saying, and I say it all the time because I was there when you know, raising the other kids. And now I think how many, four four of them is out the house. They're gone about their way. Uh, I was there when conversations would happen. And being a stepfather, part of my job was not to allow that conversation to go crazy. That's just my feeling. Because I was there when conversations happened and the dad was talked down about. And I know that's what's going on with me. I already know it because I could tell from the reaction or relationship between me and my daughter, I'm a dog-ass nigga. I'm, I'm, I'm just no good right. right now. So I got a question. Right. <laughs> I got a question, though, Drake. So, I got a quick question. Uh-huh. So being the fact that you were – a great father to the other kids don't you think that the history that you had with them prior to before your relationship ended with her that they may be saying things to at least deter your daughter from thinking that because it's hard to believe that five kids who seen you handle your business as a father to some to kids that are not even his would be a no good nigga to his own child without 
some kind of situation being involved. Right. They were like, coached. They was coached. Because I, I can't I believe I can't so. I can't believe they would think that. Mind like, you, go ahead. Mind you, three of them. Three of them were not of age at the time to understand what was really going on. Like, right. They didn't know. But two of them now of right. recently. Yeah, when I when I went recently to uh, the oldest girl's graduation, she graduated from high school uh, mm-hmm. last year. I went to her graduation with my parents. I'm gonna be honest with you. The pure shock on my baby's mom's face was a trip to me. Now, at the mm-hmm. time, I've seen, well, I haven't literally seen, but mm-hmm. I've seen her go through men left and right every mm-hmm. once in a while. I know when she was by herself because I was right. start getting calls again because she needed right. help with certain things. Right. And then it was a blockage again. Okay, she's with somebody right now. This last time when I went to see my daughter, she was with a woman. Wow. And this woman was so what what they call a stud, the stud type. That she, oh, she was uh, me, she literally stepped to me in my face uh, and told me how I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. I've had this conversation with men before. Right. I've never had it with a woman. I'd have told her the same. I'd have, I'd have told her the same thing. I'd have, I'd have told her the same thing. I would have told a man. I'd have told her the same. The I same told way. Her the same thing because there were, what was it, four guys that I talked to, mm-hmm. and I literally told them, "Yo, you just now being in this relationship, you right. see what's really going on." Exactly. You come back to me. Yeah. And I guarantee you, after talking to each of them men, the first one I gave two months, he was gone in a month. Mm-hmm. The next one I gave a month, he was gone in like three weeks. I kid you not. I, I put my right hand to God. Mm-hmm. And I told they, this woman. That demon, man. I said, I said you, she's yeah. playing the game on you right now. And yeah. I know you talking because I seen her. And she was yeah. talking to my daughter, saying certain things. And I mm-hmm. was like, okay. And as soon as they would talk or whisper or whatever they was doing, mm-hmm. my daughter would turn and look at me with just an evilish face that I yeah. had ever seen. And I'd be like, wow, for real? That's... <laughs> and that's because, okay. that's, because it goes, that's because it goes back to like how Tone said, like, kids is not going to naturally think. Let me talk about, no. about children. Children is not... children. The way children are designed, children do not naturally think someone is a fucked up person or a messed up person. They're not designed that way. They don't automatically mm-hmm. think that from the door. They have to, one or two things have to happen. They either have to be coached by an adult that's always talking messed up about that person around them for them to have preconceived thoughts that that person is a messed up person or that person has to show that child that they're a messed mm-hmm. up person. That's the only two ways children is going to think and feel that somebody's a messed up person. Other than that, a child's going to give you a fair chance from the door. You got to show them something or they got to be, you know, a coach that way. You know what I'm saying? By someone Ooh. else. My right. daughter was talking to me every single day. Mm-hmm. No lie. I'm talking about all the time. I would go to work when I was in Atlanta and she would be calling me mm-hmm. and I would be driving, have my Bluetooth in my ear and she'd mm-hmm. be like, Oh, I'm going to call you back. Cause I know you're driving. Well, I got right. my Bluetooth on. We could talk. Right. I'm talking about every single day without mm-hmm. going a day. She would trip out because maybe I was sick one day or something. And she had mm-hmm. heard from me mm-hmm. to now it's, I call, they tell her I'm on the phone and she's busy. Yeah. Or I don't even get a, a I don't even get through. My call just mm-hmm. went straight to the answer machine. See, her mama got to her. Her mama no, and the surrounding no people. No return calls, mm-hmm. no, no return text message, nothing. 
See, I'm like, Alana, wow, okay. A lot of it is definitely, <laughs> definitely the mom. And see, what happens is, is your daughter is a teenager, okay? So uh-huh. yeah, yeah. And see, y'all, y'all heard my mom's when we was on the show for the breakdown earlier, and my mom mm-hmm. is a great person. But there was a point in time when my mom was really upset at my dad, my birth dad. See, mm-hmm. what a lot of people don't know is my dad, well, if you've ever listened to the Deaf Fresh show, you would know. But my dad has never been the kind of person to stay within one relationship at a time. Okay? He's not into polygamy. He just mm-hmm. didn't know how to stay in one relationship at a time. Love a man to death, but he would literally go from wife to side chick, leave both, new wife, new side chick, leave both. This was his pattern. Mm-hmm. Right. But what ended up happening was when he stopped dealing with my mom, stopped dealing with my sister's mom, and actually went and got married to my brother's mom, he focused all his time and energy on my brother because that's the mm-hmm. son with his wife, and my sister because that's his baby girl, okay, and left mm-hmm. me to the wayside. He came up with the answer, the response that he told my mom that I know that Tony would be taken care of well with your family. And that's where it stayed at. Now, don't get me wrong. I can call my dad. I can talk to him on the phone. I know where he lived. I could do whatever I want when it came to me going to him. But for him right. to come to me... It was always an issue. He was always busy. He worked too many jobs or he didn't have the money to be able to do what I asked him to do. Now, don't get me wrong. As I got older right. and I'm in a situation where I have two kids, I have a wife and I have responsibility to take care of myself and life gets to your check before you do. I get it on mm-hmm. some of the answers he was giving. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the time, right. I didn't need your money. If I ever called my dad for money, it was because my mom made me call him for money. And I think right. because of the anger that my mom had towards my dad, she was inadvertently creating, was trying to create a riff. Okay? She wanted me to despise my father because of his lack of support as much as she did. Now, my right. mom had me when she was young. My mom had me when she was 18. She'll glad she'll tell you she walked across stage on her high school graduation with me still in her belly. She will never deny that. So me mm. and my mom grew up together. That's kind of why we got a a bond where eh, I don't want to talk to my mom, but let my mom need something and I'm there in a heartbeat. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it because we mm. grew up together. Like I can tell you everything my mom went through damn near from when I was born to where we are now, just like she can tell me, well, I remember when you were like this and this is how you are now 40 years later. That's how much we grew up together. I actually used to get on my mom's case about trying to make my dad look bad. I would. I was like, she's like, call your no good daddy. He ain't doing this, blah, blah, blah. He don't even get nothing for child support. I was like, but we don't know his situation. Mm. <laughs> like, have you talked to him? Did he tell you what he was doing? Like, how can you still want to go see that man after he left you on the porch? He was supposed to come get you and he didn't show up that day. Maybe he couldn't get off of work. Mm. Maybe he was embarrassed as a man to come over here and realize that he's taking care of these two kids plus his wife's kid. And he's not once been over here. Like, mm. us men allow our pride to dictate a lot of things that we do. Okay? Yeah. We do. The yeah. fear of us realizing that we've been absent in our kids' life scares the living shit out of us. The reason why Jacob is feeling the way Jacob is feeling right now is not because he's been not only because he's been denied the right to have a child go from birth to 18, 
But the biggest fear of Jacob right now is when he can finally sit down and try to talk to his daughter and explain to her why he hasn't been around and she don't believe him. Okay. That's the biggest yeah. fear for a lot of men. And that's why a lot of men won't yeah. go back in their kids' life. Dads who, who left mm -hmm. because they did time in jail or the divorce caused the dad to have to go try to start all over again or you were dealing with drugs and alcohol and you got caught up in the life you know or even if you were an abusive husband and you you corrected all your wrongs and you realize your mistakes and now you want to try to be a father the biggest fear is that kid telling you no it's so bad that a lot of men won't even go back to fix that issue with that kid. They'll go start a whole new family instead. A whole new family. Not realizing you're fucking that kid up even more. So men, those of you, those of you who are listening to the show live, those of you who are going to be listening to the, the download uh, later on, whether it's on iHeart, Spreaker, iTunes, wherever the hell you're listening to your pods at, when you're listening to this, mm -hmm. number one, check yourself at that door. Regardless of how much you hate your baby mama, regret the decision you made, highly upset at yourself because you allowed a good one to get away, or the fact that... This is not the one you love and you decide to go back to the one you did love. You still have a kid that you need to be a part of. Accept that mistake that That's you right. made. Okay? Regardless of that mistake is walking away or if you feel like the mistake was even sleeping with their mother to begin with. Accept that mistake. Own that mistake. And say to yourself, how do I fix this? How do I fix this? Sit down. I don't even care if the kid is five years old. My five-year-old knows more That's than right. a lot of these grown-ups right now. And I can sit here and talk to her just like a regular adult, and she'll understand. Do you know if I'm home during the weekday, my daughter comes to me like, Daddy, why are you home? You should be at work. Like, well, damn, can Daddy have a day off? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh -huh. Saturday and Sunday, but no, go to work. What the hell? <laughs> Why do I got... She's not asking for nothing. She doesn't want me to pay for anything. She don't need money. She just knows what I do. She knows where I am at. Okay? She knows when I have yeah. a show. Like I say, I'm like, Lily, I got a show to do. She knows what she's supposed to do when daddy has a show. Okay? So, mm -hmm. these kids are not dumb. Okay? Not at all. Not so, at all. No. They know... I agree. If your reason for not being in your kid's life, tell them. It's like, mm -hmm. little Billy, I'm sorry. I've been out your life. Dad, I was behind bars for X, Y, Z amount of time. I went and made some mm -hmm. mistakes. I robbed the George Webbs. I was a dumb criminal. I got caught. Mm -hmm. I would rather, I decided to go ahead and do the time instead of having the man hunting me pressuring me fucking with me for the next 18 months unfortunately that time behind bars went from six months to six years i can't give you that time back but i want to build forward i don't expect for you to say yeah let's do it today dad but will you at least give me the opportunity to try sometimes people that's all you have to do allow the kid to have their emotions. They're allowed to be pissed off at you. Like, nigga, right, yeah. you missed my yeah. high school years. Right. I was balling out of control right. and you wasn't here. Allow them to That's be pissed. Right. He's like, you know what? I know you mad. Shit, I'm mad I missed you balling out of control. Mm -hmm. Okay? You, you gotta to be real with them. You can't, like, right. kick. Mm-hmm. 
Got to be real with them. Kids are, kids are little people. You know what I'm saying? And you, you can't, you, just because you're grown and you're an adult, you can't dismiss their feelings and how they feel or, you know what I'm saying, what, what that put them through. Because when you made that decision not to be in their life, that, that wasn't just a decision that was affecting your life. That was a decision that was affecting that child life. And if you never own up to that and never have that conversation with them and sit down with them and keep it real with them, you're setting that child to go through a lot of um, emotions and a lot of certain situations in life that they may not necessarily have to go through if you take the time to sit down with them and have that conversation with them have that heart to heart have that one-on-one let them know what it is i mean you can't change the past but you can make the future better so you know you got to understand that a lot of times people get stuck a lot of times people get stuck on the past and you're, you're so stuck on you're so stuck on the negative things that the past bought or the past wasn't like how it should have been. This happened and this shouldn't have happened. I should be this way in my life, but I'm not here. And you so stuck in the past that you can't even you can't even allow yourself to have a bright future because you so stuck on the past. The past is the past for a reason. Leave that shit in the past. If you want to move forward and do better, like a lot of people give excuses like, oh, you know, like I just don't have the best luck in the world or, oh, you know, like that person did me so wrong that I don't know how to do this or, yo, um, because I've been through all kinds of things, this is the person I am is who I am and I'm going to stay that way. No. What we go through, and, and, and me saying this, with, with, with a lot of things I went through in my past, God damn it, I mean, I could write a novel or whatever, like, but and so it's, it's difficult, you know what I'm saying? It's difficult for me to say this, but I had to learn. I had to learn these things, you know what I'm saying? I, it wasn't a... It wasn't an overnight transition. Like I had to grow there and I'm still growing. I'm not saying I'm a hundred percent there. I'm still growing. But if you never take that first step and never continue your steps to progress and and to be greater, you're going to continue to be stuck in the past and making those same decisions. The cycle's going to continue. You're going to stay in that same rut. Your quote unquote bad luck is going to stay clouding around you. All that stuff is going to stay the same because first and foremost, you have to change your mental. You got to change your mental before anything else. If you still got the same mental and you still got the same fucked up ways that you had from in the past, how could you ever expect to do better? And, and then when it's dealing with a child, you're not doing nothing but passing on that fucked up cycle. And we sometimes forget kids smart. Very. <laughs> they know what's going on, even when we don't tell them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Now, right. See, the thing about it is, there's another thing, man, that you have to take in consideration that during the time that you're absent from that particular child's life, the child is doing something that we as adults don't think. The child is blaming themselves. Why daddy right. doesn't love me anymore? Now, that statement might be as far from the truth as possible, but because no one is there to have that conversation with them. That is what they do. Whether they're little kids or they're teenagers, they they will lash out. They will have anger. They will have confusion. It's always going to be them thinking they're the problem. Okay? Men, if you're walking away from a marriage, if you're walking away from a relationship with the child's mother, if you were starting to new because you and that mom just could not get on the same page, you and that mom, I don't care how much you hate each other, need to sit down together, okay? Mm -hmm. Together and explain what's going on. You might see a lot of, you see it a lot in white movies or white TV shows where they do Mm -hmm. And it's there for a reason, because mom and dad can't stand each other's guts. Dad can't stand mom because she won't keep Bob dick out of her mouth 
or dad just won't stop okay. grabbing the, the nurses at the hospital and mom is sick of this shit. Whatever the case may be, okay? Y'all got to put your anger <laughs> and your differences to the side at that point in time and let the kids know what's going on, okay? Second, for your for the people going through divorces or thinking about ask the kids where they want to go or what they want to do. Don't think just because as men, we won't stop putting our dick in everything that we won't put our kids first. Let the kid choose. Right. Okay. Let them decide. Don't, especially if they have, especially if they have of age. Oh, most definitely. I said, especially if they have of age, you know, like if they're young. Right. Right. If they're of age, they're going to make their decision regardless of what you think. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, because it makes because because what it does is it makes the it makes the dynamic it makes the situation easier or whatever uh, easier in that particular um, in that particular area as far as the kids is going to be with if they're old enough to make that decision and they can say out their mouth who they want to go you know live with who's going to be a custodial parent like if the child can tell you well okay I want to go with dad or I want to go with mom it actually makes that area different, right? Once the child says that, then there's no longer a fight in that area. We may still be fighting about personal stuff, bank accounts, mortgage, or uh, I hate you, you hate me, you know, whatever other situations, but the fight about who that child or children is going to go live with, there's no longer a fight there because the, ch- the children said they wanted to go with X, Y, Z. So right. it eliminates that right there. Right. You also, know, so also a parents, lot of you know. Oh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but also parents, you got to come with a compromise nah, as well too. So, like for an example, if we ask little Billy, "You want to go stay with your mom or go stay with your dad?" and Billy says, "I want to go stay with dad," well, then at that point in time, dad, you need to step up and ask Billy. Well, how often do you want to go stay by your mom's? Because your mom loves you just as much as I do, and you can't abandon your right. mom because she needs you through this difficult time. Just as so much. You, you have to. Right put responsibility in this situation on the kid just as much as you two as the parents have a responsibility to make sure that that kid understands and can get through this just like y'all so just say oh i want to go stay with dad it's like cool you can easily you know we'll find a place together we'll look for a house together we'll we'll make this move a guy thing but you got to take care of your mom too bro Mm -hmm. Like, who's going to make sure that mom's this? Who's going to make sure mom's that? Like, I get it. Dad couldn't keep his dick out of Sarah. But mom still needs someone to hold her and love her and take care of her. You got to be that protector. You got to help your mom find somebody else to love. You know, you got to bring the kid into it as well like don't right. always make the situation feel messy and make the kid feel like they're the reason right. for everything make the kid feel right. like they're the reason why this is going to work instead so right flip it right mm-hmm. flip right it. especially the younger ones because you know, mm-hmm. yeah they might want to go with dad today but then like after they stay with dad and they realize well, dad don't let me do certain things mom will let me do I want to go stay with mom. Mm-hmm. Gotta, gotta say, okay, you know, go stay with mom sometimes. Come stay with me. How would you feel like if you stay with me for, you know, a few months and then go back to your mom? Or, hey, where should I move to that way you don't have to leave your school friends? Maybe make it work, men and women. Mm-hmm. Especially when it comes to the kids. You gotta fucking make it work for the kids. I can't even stress that anymore because, oh my God the younger ones okay um i know i've been rambling people i tend to do this um because this is this is this is this is a deep topic this is this is about Um, to say this is a deep topic it isn't wrong with that because a lot of times mm -hmm. i didn't want this this episode to be just another fuck you women give me my child episode i wanted right right i wanted i wanted responsibilities on both parts I wanted people to look at mm-hmm. things from a different perspective. I really want to dive into helping men get back into their kids' life. But I don't want to make it specifically just men. I think I want to do it that we, the next time we do a show, I want to help parents acclimate back into their kids' lives. Because every reason why we named that a man might not be in the kid's life, 
women do it too. And I think that we need to talk to both parents. Oh, yeah. We need Definitely. to talk to both parents. Definitely. Because there's a lot of things that we need to cover yeah. when, when you're acclimating. Everything from handling the fact of your kid who may despise mm-hmm. you to turn that negativity mm-hmm. into a positive. Um, mm-hmm. How to handle being away for a long period of time. Um, even mm-hmm. handling the fact that you have to start over in some cases. Like if you're a, a drug right. addict who just got clean, you might need help learning how to be a parent and be clean at the same time. Because once little Ray Ray start pissing on the floor, you might need to hit the bottle and you, you don't have that option anymore. <laughs> so... Mm-hmm. Like we definitely yeah, gonna dive true. into that to that to that a different day. Um we might not do it next week, we might do it a little bit later on down the road because my oldest birthday is this weekend and if we can get everything done oh, on Saturday, that's uh we definitely mm-hmm. will do a show on Monday, but I don't want something this important to be on the same weekend because it's also Juan's birthday next right. weekend too, so I know Fat Boy is not going to want to be on air. He's going to want to be doing something else. But with that being said, uh, I'd like to thank everybody who's listening on the live, everybody that listened to um, in the chats. I'd like to thank everybody that's put in their two cents. Definitely make sure you follow Tone Deaf Radio on Spreaker, SoundCloud, iTunes, or wherever else you listen to your pods at. And, Cal, what do you have to say for the listeners out there? I just, I just want to um, definitely say, you know, Thank you for everybody that's tuned in today for this topic because this is a very, you know, very important topic, uh, you know, in society right now. A lot of a lot of fathers are stepping up, you know, for a long period of time. We a lot of fathers got a lot of backlash on not stepping up and being those deadbeats. And yes, it was that for a long time. But right now in society and for quite some time, a lot of fathers are stepping up and doing their thing. You have a lot of single fathers out there doing their thing. You have a lot of fathers that have custody of their kids after a divorce or separation. You have a lot of fathers really trying so hard to be in a kid's life and due to other obstacles is being, uh, you know, made damn near impossible. So this is very near and dear to, you know, all of us as fathers. And I just want to say thank you for everybody tuning in and continue continue to be in your children's life. I don't care what obstacles come in the way. Just keep on pushing. I know it's hard. And yes, and I'm talking as a father who has his children, who has custody of his kids. It can be difficult. It can be hard. You're going to go through a lot, but you keep on because it's not just about you. It's about those kids. Gator, you have any words for the people before we raise about here tonight? I got a shout out to one person in particular. Dear Heartbeat, I'm writing to you because apparently you're not willing to talk to me. I honestly don't know what I've done to cause this. I try my best to communicate with you as often as possible, but that hasn't worked. I can usually tell when things are bad. It's around the time I'm able to communicate with you. But seems because things have gotten financially bad on my end, I'm tossed to the side. Just to hear your voice used to brighten my day, but I'm unable to do that anymore. I know I used to be able to do a lot, but not for a while. I know you've been told a lot, but the truth of the matter is, I never left. As my call and messages and texts, voice messages go unanswered, I am sure people have gotten their way. Their whole job seemed to be to get you to hate me. I now think they have finally succeeded. I just hope one day you will see truth and know I am not the guy that you think I am. Just know I love you, and I will always be here when you need me. Your pops, Jacob. No doubt. And with that being said, people, we're going to go ahead and end tonight's show the only way we know how here at Tone Deaf Radio.